Hi guys, welcome to part 3 of this tutorial. Uh, towards the end of the previous part, we noticed this kind of problem. Well, it's not an error per se. What is happening is that the form is loading uh, initial, what we call the initial load, which we need to restrict. So I'm going to talk about uh, how to use the isset function to prevent this from happening. So uh, PHP has a function called isset, which I'm going to implement so that it checks whether the user has pressed on submit before uh, any PHP function or any PHP code is executed. So um, I'm going to do if is set set and then we're going to have uh, the value posted being submit. This is the name of this button here. So our input button. So if is set submit then we want our PHP code to go inside there. So if this works success, successfully, then we are going to have that form not uh, erroneously loading or uh, prior loading before the user presses on submit button. So that should tame it. Okay, so let's see how this works. I'll try to reload. Now, you try to reload, it's not going to reload until you enter the values. I'm still going to use my personal email. Test to three, submit. Now it can print for us that. So that's another trick that you can use to prevent forms from preloading. Um, I want to move on to the next bit. Um, the other part is for us to establish a connection or that we want to put values to our database now that you have passed them to PHP. So I can remove this test. And then, um, let me check if I have any existing any existing database that you can use. Show databases. we can just create our own database so create database february february so then use february so right now our database has no tables in it yep so we can create table users then inside users we want to have Okay, so we want to have, let's start with having a user ID. This one I'll add it as int, maybe auto, increment, and then uh, that's an, an, int, an auto increment value, so the users will not need to enter it. Then I'll have fn, this one I want it to be a varchar, maybe size of 50, and ln, I want this to be varchar, size of what? same 50 then we have email some emails well spark 50 and because of password encryption we can uh, we can change this to this password let's use p okay password this is worker let's use 100 because sometimes we may need to encrypt it set primary key and we want to set primary key as a user, the ID. So I hope we run this and successfully we create the database. The table, yeah, table successfully created. Let's describe it. Uh, user table, oh, sorry, users. That's how our table looks like. <clears throat> so we have set up our table. So DB name, let's put a comment here. DB name is uh, February. And table name is this. Okay, so uh, once we have done that, we can uh, establish connection. So let us just establish a connection. So I will put a comment here establishing connection to DB. There are four variables that you need to provide here. You need to provide the server name you need to provide the username 
uh, the username for that server then you need to provide the password and then finally we also need to provide the database so i'll declare variables here server and server name is of course localhost because we are running from exam which is residing on my laptop then we have the user is root so the root user then we have uh, password don't confuse it with this one this is password for the user form okay so this is this password here the password i'm talking about is a database password this one that i had to enter that i gave just a pass just a blank or rather i didn't provide a value for it that's a setting i have but of course in real life environment you will have a password for that then um pass and then the db we can have it as our db is db name is february so let's test if this connection is working so i can say um sorry we've not yet created the connection create connection use the function mysql -E, connect then we provide these values here so we're going to provide server name that's one of the variables required then you're going to provide the user which is our root then you're going to provide password and finally we will provide db the database so we can test if this is okay i know there are other better ways of testing but just uh, for this particular tutorial let's just use this so we've not even end con so if the connection is true we can say connected and if it's not else let's just say mm, error connecting connecting to db okay so let's test this I want to submit something. Connected. And uh, let's test if our testing mechanism is working. So, probably if I said uh, February, if I erroneously spelled that, continue, it tells me that unknown data is February. So, meaning that our connection is actually uh, connected well. So I want to stop that video there. Let's meet in the next series.